it is a product of the exterior world of the sender and of a receiver, an ego that receives the input by means of the antennae of the sense organs and brings it into consciousness. If one of the two is lacking, no reality happens, no radio music plays, no picture screen remains, the picture screen remains blank. If one continues with the conception of reality as a product of sender and receiver, then the entry of another reality under the influence of LSD may be explained in that the brain, the seat of the receiver, becomes biochemically altered. The receiver is thereby tuned into another wavelength than that corresponding to normal everyday reality. Since the endless variety and diversity of the universe correspond to infinitely, infinitely many different wavelengths, depending on the adjustment of the receiver, many different realities, including the respective, the respective ego, can become conscious. These different realities, more correctly designed as different aspects of the reality, are not mutually exclusive, but are complementary and form together a part of the all-encompassing, timeless, transcendental reality in which even as the unimpeachable, in, un, unimpeachable core of the conscious self that has the power to record the different egos is located. In the capacity to shift the wavelength setting of the receiving self and thereby to evoke alterations in reality consciousness lies the true importance of LSD and related hallucinogens. This ability to allow different new pictures of reality to arise, this truly cosmogonic power makes a cultish worship of hallucinogenic plants as sacred, as sacred drugs by so-called primitive societies understandable. What constitutes the essential characteristic difference between everyday reality and the world picture experienced in LSD inebriation? Self and the outer world are separated in the normal condition of consciousness in everyday reality. One stands face to face with the outer world, which has become an object. In the LSD state, the boundaries between the experiencing self and the outer world more or less disappear, depending on the depths of the inebriation. Feedback between receiver and sender takes place. A portion of the self overflows into the outer world, into objects. They begin to live, to have another, a deeper meaning. This can be perceived as a blessed or as a demonic transformation, imbued with terror, proceeding to a loss of the trusted ego. But in an auspicious case, the Self feels blissfully united with the objects of the outer world and consequently also with the fellow man. This experience of deep unitedness with the exterior world can even intensify to a feeling of the self being one with the universe. This condition of cosmic consciousness that under favorable conditions can be evoked by LSD or by another hallucinogen from the group of Mexican sacred drugs is analogous to spontaneous religious enlightenment with the Unio Mystica. 
in both conditions that often last only for a timeless moment, a reality is experienced that, ex that exposes a gleam of the transcendental reality in which the universe and self, sender and receiver, are one. Gottfried Benz, the German writer, in his essay, Provoziertes Leben, Provocative Life, characterized the reality in which self and the world are separated as the schizoid catastrophe, the occidental entelechy neurosis. He further writes, this concept of reality began to form in the southern part of our continent. The Hellenic European principle of combat of conquest, through work, artifice, malice, talent, force, Greek in the manner of Arete, late European in the form of Darwinism and the overman, fashioned it this, this, uh, decidedly. This. The self came forward, stepped down, struggled. For that purpose it required means, matter, might. As Gottfried Ben formulates it in these sentences, a concept of reality that separates self and world has decisively determined the evolutionary course of European intellectual history. Experience of the world as matter, as object, to which man stands opposed, has produced modern natural science and technology, creations of, of the occidental mind that have changed the world. With their help, man has subdued the world. Its wealth has been exploited in a manner that may be characterized as plundering and the sublime accomplishments of technological civilization, the comfort of Western industrial society, stands face to face with the catastrophic destruction of the environment, even to the heart of matter, to the nucleus of the atom, and its splitting, this objective intellect has progressed as had, and has unleashed, unleashed energies that threaten all life on our planet. 